what the black man and woman needs to know about the nation, about the world, about themselves. Mohammed Speaks It. To order your 12-issue subscription to Mohammed Speaks newspaper, 313-371-7033. 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie is the grand champion of all bean pies. The rich flavor and smooth texture takes this pie to a whole new level of delicious. One bite and you'll understand why people all over the country call daily to order Kareem Bean Pie. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie. This bean pie is delicious. Mohammed Speaks presents Messenger Elijah Muhammad's Teachings by Minister Khalil Shabazz every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 12609 East McNichols Road in Detroit. Brothers and sisters, we rise for prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. So, Master's Day of Judgment, in which we now live, the alarm do we serve, and the alarm seeks for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou spill thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down. Nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say he allows one God. Allows he of whom nothing is independent but upon whom we all depend. He beget us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is heard to be served, worshiped, or praised besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. Amin. We like to acknowledge the brothers and sisters that extended us the greetings of Assalamu alaikum. We have Brother Mustafa and Sister Sharice Ali from Ohio. I like to say in the name of Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, and in the name of his last and greatest messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I like to greet the brothers and sisters with the Nation of Islam's greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. Today we like to talk about the God. Allah is the God of the Bible. We have another video, and this one is called Muslims Seeing the Bible Come to Life. And in this particular video, I mean, they say the same things about Islam, but it's just so many that you can't cover them all. But every time they talk to brothers and sisters on the street, two things they always tell them when, they, when Islam is brought up. Because this person who they was talking to wasn't a Muslim. It was a lost found person who, you know, asked him something about Islam. So he told the brother, for one, he said, Muslims worship a rock in Mecca. That's the first thing he said, because they say that all the time. They make the lost found brothers think that when uh, Muslims go to the Hajj, they actually worship in the rock. Then he told him that... Uh, uh, that the God of the Bible, or we don't worship God. Our God is a white man. This is what they continuously tell the black man when they talk to them about Islam. So let's talk about the God of the Bible being Allah. Let's start with the principles of Islam that the messenger wrote in the, in the message to the black man. And this is on page 72. The messenger said the God in Islam is not a national or a tribal God. Now, let's stop right there. Now, what does that mean when you talk about a national or a tribal God? When you uh, read in the Bible, when they talk for God, God says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That's a national or a tribal God. They don't say that he the Lord of the worlds. They say that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the Israelites are the Jews. Since they are the ones who tamper with the Bible, when people look at Islam, they look at Allah as a tribal God. They look at it and say, well, 
since Yahweh or Yah came to the Israelites, then Allah came to Muhammad and he only the God of the Arabs. That's what the white man did when he tampered with the Bible. He made God a national and a tribal God. But the messenger, he said the God in Islam is not a national or a tribal God. But as the Quran describes him in the opening words, he is the Lord of the worlds. So when we go to the first chapter of the Holy Quran, it starts off by saying in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Off the top, letting it be known that God is not the God of Abraham or Allah is not the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob alone. Because the Jews and the Hebrews and the Israelites, they main focus is the covenant that God made with Isaac. That's what makes them special because they got a tribal God, the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it was a covenant that God made with us. So since we being people who believe in a spook, we already been taught the concept that God is a tribal God. So we don't see God as being the Lord of the worlds. We see God as being a God that has a particular people who better than everybody else and he gives no guidance to nobody, just to these special people. But the messenger taught us, he said in Islam, Allah is not a tribal God. Allah is the Lord of the worlds. Allah is the God over the devil. Because the messenger taught us, that for 6,000 years, Allah sent prophets to the devil. He did not forbid them of right guidance. Because Allah is the Lord of the worlds. But let's keep on going. Let's show an example of how this tribal God, the difference between the Bible and the Holy Quran. This is Moses. We're going to compare Moses from the Bible and from the Holy Quran. This comes from Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. We start with verse 4. It says, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then verse 6 says, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. So this is an example of how the white race tampered with the Bible. They made God a tribal God right up under our nose. So how would we know that God was not a tribal God if he did not reveal another scripture? Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the Holy Quran verifies the truth of the Bible. Right. Because the white man tampered with the Bible in ways we wouldn't even have picked up on if it hadn't been for the man. I never thought nothing about no tribal or a national God until I read the teachings of the messenger. He break down even the concepts that the white man tampered with in the Bible. So the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the Holy Quran verifies the truth of the Bible. So the Holy Quran is a book that was revealed to the prophet Muhammad so that we would have a way to check or that the Bible would have checks and balances. So this is the Holy Quran talking about the same incident with Moses. And this comes from chapter 28. Verse 30, it says, and when he came to it, he was called from the right side of the valley in the blessed spot of the bush. Oh, Moses, surely I am Allah, 
the Lord of the words. All oh, praise is due to Allah. Two totally, completely different concepts. Because in the Bible, the white man or the Israelite or the Hebrew or the Jew, they give us a concept of God as if he is a national or a tribal God. But the God of Islam, let's it be known when he told Abraham or Moses, I am the Lord of the words. Yes, I'm not just your God. I'm everybody's God. Praise due to Allah. I'm the God of the birds. I'm the God of the ants. I'm the God of the air. I'm the God of the water. I am the Lord of all the worlds. So if the white man in his body would have just represented God as the Lord of the worlds, never said nothing about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we would see no difference in Muhammad than any other prophet. They all came with the same religion. So let's go on even further. In the Holy Quran. This is chapter 62, verse 6. Because we must understand that the Holy Quran verifies the truth of the Bible. So it's only bearing witness to what the Bible says that is true. But it also highlights the things in the Bible that is wrong. So this comes from chapter 62, verse 6. It says, oh, you who are Jews, if you think that you are the favorites of Allah to the exclusion of other people, then invoke death if you are truthful. Invoke means request death. That's what it means to invoke. So Allah making it clear to the Jews. It makes it clear that they the murderers of the prophets. It makes it clear that they tampered with the scriptures. And it also makes it clear to us that they are not the favorites of Allah to the exclusion of other people. God or Allah is the Lord of the world. So let's keep going with the message. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He says, God, the God in Islam is not a national or tribal God. But as the Holy Quran describes him in the opening words, he is the Lord of the worlds. This conception of God is best. Since man's belief is by nature that there must exist somewhere in the universe, one who has and can exercise a great power, then, then can he or the object that he is bowing to as his God. The Islam God is one of whom there is no equal. One to whom whatsoever is in the heavens, whatsoever is in the earth, submits willingly or unwillingly. He is the Lord of the creation of the universe. And since he has no equal, he demands universal recognition and complete submission to his will. That's the messenger teaching us about Allah. He taught us that the Islam God is one whom there is no equal. Because I went and I uh, tried to find out because they say in the Bible that God's uh, personal name is Yahweh. That's what God's personal name is. But they say that the Jews thought that God's name was so sacred that they would not say his name in public. So they say that the actual pronunciation of Yahweh or whatever God's name is, they don't even know what it is. This is what they say. Talking about why do you think God's name is so sacred that you don't want to tell other people? Because God's name is sacred, but he still wants to be known. The messenger told us about Farah. That name is above the 99 attributes. He said that name is self-independent, but he told us that God has made himself known. 
He's not a God that want to be hit. So the Jews said that Yahweh, they don't even know if they pronouncing it right. So they also said that Yahweh only it's a simple definition for Yahweh. It only means I am that I am. That's what Yahweh means. That's what the God of the Bible's name. I am that I am. And that's it. But the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that master that Allah has 99 divine attributes. And when we go to the Holy Quran, every chapter, except for the ninth chapter, I believe the ninth chapter is the chapter of the hypocrites. But all of the chapters, the 113 chapters in the Holy Quran, all of them start with in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. So let's see what does that mean to further get an understanding of how Allah is a God or the Lord of the worlds. When you go to the definition for uh uh, the beneficent, which is uh, Rahman. That's what the beneficent means. The definition for the beneficent, it says he who wills goodness and mercy for all his creation. It says Allah is our Rahman. He is the one who blesses all his creation with prosperity and and devoid from disparity. He is most merciful, kind, and loving towards all creation. His Rahma is all inclusive and embraces all. So that is what every chapter in the Holy Quran start with. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and the merciful. So what does the merciful mean in Arabic? But the merciful means Al Rahim. It says he who acts with extreme kindness. It says the name Al Rahim comes from the same root as Al Rahman, which refers to Allah's attribute of being merciful. Although similar related, the meanings are different. Al Rahman can be understood to refer to Allah as the origination source of all mercy, where Al Rahim refers to its uh, sustaining infiniteness. Some view the name at Al Rahim as being merciful to his creation, deserving of his mercy, primarily the, primarily the mercy reserved for the believer. That was interesting. Like, wow. So Allah is the most merciful to all his creation. Allah, the messenger, told us the sun shines on the righteous as well as the wicked. That's right. He told us that the righteous suffer right along with the wicked. But Allah has a special kind of mercy for those who submit to his will. All praise is due to Allah. Even though he's the most merciful. He merciful to the devil. He merciful to the birds. He merciful to all his creation. But Allah has a special mercy for those who believe. And this shows how Allah is not a tribal God. Because the messenger taught us that if we being the black man who is uh, righteous by nature, he said if we don't accept Allah, We'll be destroyed right along with the devil. That's right. But he told us if it's some devils who accept Allah, they will see the hereafter. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's Allah, the beneficent, the mercy. Yes. All those who believe. The messenger said that God, Allah, Master Farad Muhammad, God in person, did not come to North America to save one white person. That's right. Young old. But Allah is the beneficent and the merciful. He has special mercy for the believer. But he also has mercy for all of his creation. 
Because Allah is not a national God. Allah is not a tribal God. Allah is a universal God. Yes, sir. So that's the huge difference between the God of the Bible or the concept of the God of the Bible and Allah. So this comes from the September 20th, 1968, Muhammad Speaks. And this is from uh, Sister Anna Kareem. It's called Black Students Want Truth Only Messenger Muhammad Can Provide. She says, my fellow students, as you start a new school year, you should watch for courses being offered wherein you are referred to as a Negro or an Afro-American. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the only man who can teach you the basis of why a black man is universal and not limited to the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. This is something that we must know also when we know about our universal God. The black man is universal also. Everything about us is universal. We have a universal flag of Islam. Our God is universal. We are universal. We have a universal flag. His laws are universal. That's the teachings of the messenger. And that's why we get so confused about Prophet Muhammad and all the rest of the prophets. Because we don't understand that Allah is the Lord of the worlds. We believe that he's only a tribal God. We believe that God, he is only a national God. But the messenger always taught us that God is a universal God. He said that the black man is the future rulers. He said we are going to rule universally. That's why he said this war is a universal war. Right. Because the messenger said that Allah is going to uproot evil from all corners of the world. Yeah. So the world will be nothing but righteousness. So this is another Muhammad Speaks article. This is December 11th, 1970, Muhammad Speaks. It says, college students hear minister teach the messenger's wisdom. He says in this article, it says, speaking on blackness, he said, black is not national. It is universal. Black does not come from other colors. They come from black. You can't produce black. Science bears that out. So black is the original color. This is what makes the black man universal. The black man is the original man. Meaning we are the first people on the earth. All of this belongs to us. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that God came to make himself known. He also came to uh, ask us to accept our own and be ourselves. He said that if we're going to be the future rulers, we must have an understanding of it all. Not just understanding of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Not just understanding of the Quran. Not just an understanding of ourselves. We must know ourselves and us. Right. So the messenger taught us that the black man was robbed of a knowledge of self. He was robbed of a knowledge of God. He was robbed of a knowledge of self and the knowledge of the devil. So this caused us to be blind, deaf, and dumb. So we worship the God of the white man. So the messenger goes on. He says, in another place, reads, And my mercy encompasses all things. This is Holy Quran 7, verse 156. Then he quotes Malana Muhammad Ali. He says, the great apostle of the unity of God could not conceive of a God who was not the author of all that existed. So even when you talking about the Arabs, they understand that Allah is the Lord of the worlds. They understand that Prophet Muhammad did not come to them and, and no other people had a prophet or a messenger before. The thing about the Arabs, it's just like with anybody. If you, 
Like if you, they make it to seem like they are the favorites of Allah. We got to understand that about Arabs too. They just like the Jews. They make the black man feel like Islam is their religion. Because they've been the top dogs of Islam for thousands of years. So now they see that we living in the resurrection. They see that the black man is the future root. So just like with the white man, messenger said the white man is not going to give this up without a fight. Arabs feel the same way. They're not going to tell us this our religion. This is why God had to come. Because the messenger goes on even further in a uh, mess message to the black man. It's in the section called Islam, only true religion of God. The messenger says, he says, it is a perfect insult to Allah who made heaven and earth and makes the earth to produce everything for our service and even the sun, moon and the stars. They serve our needs for us to bow down and worship anything other than Allah as God. The great Mahdi, Allah, in person, who is in our midst today, will put a stop once and forever to the serving and worshiping of other gods besides himself. So just like we talked about before, God or Allah is not a tribal or a national God. We believe that God is a man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that God came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, July 4th, 1930. The same concept of the Bible, the same concept or the same concept we have in the Holy Quran is the same concept that we apply to Master Farad Muhammad. He's not a tribal God. He's not a national God. He is a universal God. Messenger taught us that he would put a stop to those who worship anything other than himself. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that God came to make himself known. He made himself known in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. He told us that he came to Black Bottom, Detroit. He came to Black Bottom, Detroit seeking to save that which is lost. Right. So he, the messenger told us he found one. He found one from among us. Raised him to teach and guide the black man. No different from Moses. No different from Abraham. No different from Muhammad. The honorable Elijah Muhammad is the last and greatest messenger of Allah. All praise is due to Allah. So the messenger goes on. He says, we are now being brought face to face with Allah for a showdown between him and that which we have served as God besides him. The lost and found members of the Asiatic nation are especially warned in the 112th chapter of the Holy Quran against the worship of anything other than Allah. For it is Allah in person who has found them among the worshipers of gods other than Allah. So it is especially warning us. It ain't especially warning the Arabs. It ain't especially warning the Chinese. It's especially warning the black man in America. Because we are the ones who are being brought face to face with God. No more that I ain't know. The messenger said he was going to make the truth so plain that even a fool can't act. That sometimes is something that we should all think about. Whenever you see these hypocrites, weak Muslims and disbelievers, the messenger said, I will make the truth so plain that even a fool can't act. Now, most people is smarter than a fool. But even for the fool, the messenger said, the fool can't help. So this is why he taught us that we are especially one. 
Because God came specifically for the black man. Specifically for us. This teaching was specifically tailor made for the black man. So our law especially warns us. Ain't no more I'm going to pray with the Orthodox Muslims. No more of that. No more I'm trying to tell the Christians that our God and your God is the same. When you know they believe in a spook. Messengers say we being brought face to face. Face to face with God. But I want to talk about now. Since we being brought face to face to, with God. Why don't nobody never say nothing to defend the messenger? Because the messenger also taught us. He taught us about hypocrites. I believe in my soul. We need to talk about hypocrites all the time. Just like the messenger taught us about hypocrites all the time. That's right. So let's go talk about some hypocrites. This comes from the November 26th. 1971, Muhammad speaks. This is the messenger. He says the hypocrites who have and who are now set in the nation of Islam must be removed out of the way. He says no people nor organization, regardless to what it is, religion or political, can be successful with hypocrites on the panel. Now let's talk about a hypocrite. This Lewis Eugene. Not only is this hypocrite on the panel, he at the top spot. This hypocrite. Messenger said you can never be successful with hypocrites on the panel. So the messenger goes on. He says here in Chicago, the die has been set and the material has been made according to the die. I hope that Allah will chase you, will cause you to see. For I most certainly hope to get you removed out of our temple number two, which is full of disbelievers as well as in other temples, where they go from one to the other, carrying venomous poison of hatred against brother and against sister. And those who are trying to live the righteous life with the truth that will bring them into heaven at once. Now, when the messenger was saying this, I'm pretty sure. Now, I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty sure that the Muslims during that time was real shocked to hear the messenger talk about his hypocrites in temple number two. Right under your nose. But the man, that's why I love reading his articles. Because since we, I never saw Malcolm X. Never lived through his history. So when I read the messenger speak about the characteristics of a hypocrite, I can see the things that Malcolm was doing. I can. But it hit a little different. When you living to see this hypocrite and he doing exactly what the messenger said. That's, right. That's a little different. Because when the messenger talk about hypocrites, he be spot on. He be spot. I be like, how can you be a hypocrite and you got old? I thought a hypocrite had maybe one, maybe two. Farrakhan got all the characteristics of a hypocrite. Yes, and I'm to all praises spot on. Every I was just off the top of my head. The messenger talks about a hypocrite. He said he's neither this nor that. This was like in the 1960s, the late 60s that I was that this articles was coming out. The messenger says the hypocrites are neither this nor that. He's saying they're not loyal to the devil. They're not loyal to the Muslims. They just a hypocrite. Spot on with Lewis. That's right. He's neither this nor that. Right. And the messenger said you cannot be successful. With hypocrites on the path. So this is why we have these black Hebrew Israelites. Because it'd be so amazing to me what they can say. And don't know Muslims say nothing. I was a lost farm. I'm going to just keep it real. 
We defended basketball players and rappers harder than Muslims defend the messenger. I'm telling you, as a lost foul, we defended Jesus harder than Muslims defend the message. Because I'm the person, I'm going to just keep it real. And I done said it before. I watch these Israelites every week. I'm like one of their biggest fans. I go searching for the Islam stuff. I do every week. I just watch them. They even have videos that premiere. Sometimes I come back clicking just to see what they about to say about Islam. It'd be so surprising how these brothers can stand outside with microphones, big speakers, blasting, talking about Elijah Muhammad worshiped the moon, talking about the messenger, just all kind of stuff slandering the message. But the messenger taught us. He said you cannot be successful with hypocrites on the path. So let's go on even further with the message. He said, do not be friend hypocrites. He said, being friends with the hypocrites is dangerous. The Holy Quran warns you against taking them for friends. The Holy Quran teaches you and me their disbelieving actions so that you may recognize them. If they be in your family or home, you cannot be successful trying to befriend one who is against your God and the truth, for he is against you for believing. Now let's just say hypothetically, this, this hypocrite, we know for a fact, Farrakhan a hypocrite, Lewis Eugene. Yes. We know that for an absolute fact. That's right. But for the sake of the argument, let's say his son ain't a hypocrite. Let's say he just befriending his father. Messengers say you can't be successful befriending hypocrites because the hypocrite is against you for belief. Mm -hmm. So even though hypothetically he befriending his father because the messenger, let's read it one more time. He said being friends with the hypocrites is dangerous. The Holy Quran warns you against taking them for friends. And the Holy Quran teaches you and me their disbelieving actions so that you may recognize them. If they be in your family or home, you cannot be successful trying to befriend one, of, one who is against your God and the truth, for he is against you for belief. So you got him. This hypocrite Lewis is against him if he believe. So this brother's supposed to be the uh, supreme captain of the FOI. Now while Bust that bishop now, disrespecting the messenger nationwide. What this dude doing? They shared this picture on Facebook. He had the Janet Jackson concert with Busta Rhymes. This brother is the supreme captain of the FOI. Now let's just say for the sake of the art, he ain't a hypocrite, but he loved his hypocrite, Louis Eugene. This the kind of supreme captain you going to be because the hypocrite hates you for belief. Mm -hmm. Messenger said he can be in your house. He can be your husband. He could be your son. He could be your father, your mother. You will not be successful befriending a hypocrite. <laughs> so you got this hypocrite, Louis Eugene. Let's say for the sake of the argument, his son ain't a hypocrite. He just befriending a hypocrite. When you look at this picture, it don't just say that Mustafa there. It says Janet Jackson and the Farrakhan family. Janet Jackson, the only lost found in the picture. But when you look at them other three sisters, they look just as lost found as Janet That's Jackson. Right. The messenger said you cannot be successful with hypocrites on the path. You can't be successful because the messenger told us you must get rid of them. So let's go on even further. Not only do this brother got his fan. I don't even know who the wife, who the daughter. They just his fan. 
Janet Jackson, the only sister who the lost found. They all, he looked like a lost found. So then we got another picture. Now these is pictures that they share. This picture was shared. The, the, the Facebook page that it's on, it's called What the Nation, is, the Nation of Islam is Doing. That's the name of, for all the lost files now. They share this stuff. That's why you cannot be successful. Be friendly, because they don't even see what's wrong with this. None of them do. They don't know because they befriending the hypocrite. The hypocrite hates the believers. The hypocrite wants you to betray Allah like they do. So Farrakhan, this hypocrite, he know for an absolute fact, they all, they all on their way to hell. He used to sit and talk to the messenger. I'm talking about having talks with the messenger that ain't nobody around. He could call the messenger on the phone. Read the messenger's articles. This hypocrite know for a fact his son and all his family is going straight to hell. But the messenger said, that's on you. Because the messenger said, I make the truth so plain even a fool can't help. So let's look at another picture of him. Not only he taking pictures with Janet Jackson, he taking pictures with Buster Rhymes. This brother is the supreme captain of the nation of Islam. Now let's compare, because I always like to talk about the history. And this just gives me an excuse to talk about some fighting stuff with the messenger. Let's talk about the FOI when the messenger was alive. This comes from the June 29th, 1964 Chicago Tribune. Because I'm going to use two different newspapers that's not the Muhammad Speaks, to tell you about one incident. So you will know how easy it is for you, if you want to, to see how much Muslims was fighting with the message. Because bus stop bishop and all these Israelites, they can play all that fake tough stuff with Lewis. The messenger wasn't playing them kind. You can think all this old he black and all that you want to think. That's why I bring it. To, even if you was black, you was not disrespecting the message. It's one that I, I just come to my mind. This shows you the messenger's principles. Shows you his integrity and what he stood for. I always talk about it, but it was this uh, dinner that he was having. When all these dignitaries came, he didn't go. But he was listening to the tape at home of what they said about him. Now, all of the dignitaries, the messenger was in the Muhammad Speaks. He wrote an article about he was giving them all kind of praise. I want to thank this one. Thank that one for what you said. All this and this and that. But he saved the bulk of his article for Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson at that. Now, we don't see Jesse Jackson as no militant today. But then he was. He was seen as a militant Christian preacher. Mm -hmm. He used to come around Muslims. He used to go to the messenger's home. Mm -hmm. You see him all in the Muhammad Speaks New. He used to praise the messenger. Mm -hmm. But this one particular time, the messenger was listening to uh, Jesse Jackson talk about him on his tape. So Jesse Jackson, just like how this hypocrite Lewis be trying to front he was giving the messenger saying good things because that's the past that we give these black people. If they say something like Kevin Samuels, all these weak chicken hearted brothers who like Shaharaza talking about Kevin Samuel said some good about the nation. So now you just love Kevin Samuels. Jesse Jackson was saying something good about the messenger. But when the messenger was listening to what he was saying. He said, it sounds like he trying to hide some of my accomplishments. That's what the messenger said in her. Yes. He can listen to what he was saying. Messenger feeling like this brother be coming over my house. He always in the salon. He always at some. He know more about my works than what he said. Uh -huh. Because Jesse Jackson was saying something good. Just like everybody. 
Jesse Jackson wasn't at the place saying, well, Elijah Muhammad ain't nothing. No, he just like, oh, he got farms. He got schools. He got restaurants. But when the messenger was listening to him, he said, it sounds like he is hiding some of my accomplishments. Praise due to Allah. So the messenger ripped Jesse Jackson, called him a dumb preacher and everything. So let's go and talk about the message. This comes from the June 29th, 1964, Chicago Tribune. It's called Guard Elijah Muhammad on Harlem Visit. It says scores of police and Muhammad's own husky elite guards, the fruit of Islam. Let's stop right there. What does husky mean? Let's just start with husky. Because this is how they used to describe the FOI every time they talked about them. They didn't talk about the FOI like all oh, these just Muhammad's guards, like he got bodyguards. No, they used to always say the Husky and the elite. What does Husky mean? It says if you describe someone, especially a man, as Husky, you think that they are tall, big, and strong. That's what husky mean. What does elite mean? It says a select group that is superior in terms of ability or qualities to the rest of the group or society. So every time you read, because I bring these articles so everybody can go see what I be talking. Because I want somebody to say I'm lying when I talk about the fighting stuff. Even if you was black. Because this hypocrite make us think we, oh, my black brother, oh, my black brother, oh, he my brother, I got to no. It's the message. That's who it is. We letting you know how it's going down with us. Right. We letting you know how it's going down with this brother stuff. We this is what's brotherly to us. If you disrespect Elijah Muhammad, let me say this. Because I heard this stuff he used to say, talking about beating all the teeth out of people's head. He used to say that. If that's what you need to understand you're going to respect Elijah Muhammad, that's what they did. So these police officers and these news reporters described the messenger's guards. It says scores of police and Muhammad's own husky elite guards, the fruit of Islam, guarded the entrance and the hall of the armory where Muhammad spoke. All members of the audience were frisked before entrance. It says a man, according to police, was roughed up by the Muslim guards when he failed to show proper identification and was taken to a hospital. That was that was nothing uncommon to read when you read about uh, Savior's Day. It wasn't uncommon because a lot of people used to think the messenger was just some chump. Like they be talking about, oh, the Muslims did all this to the white man, but they ain't going to, or to Malcolm, but they ain't going to do nothing to the white man. No. So a lot of people used to try to message. As my daddy said, they thought fat meat wasn't grease. Did just Elijah Poo. Them niggas ain't going to do nothing. So a lot of people found out. So let's go on even further. So this person was roughed up and sent to the hospital. Then it goes on to say, the only other incident during the rally occurred when Jesus Emmanuel of Philadelphia was attacked by two Negroes as he passing as he was passing out anti-Muhammad literature near the arm. He suffered a broken nose and lost two teeth, police said, but refused medical aid. They did all that to him for passing out. Anti-Muhammad literature. Praise due to Allah. That's the difference when you don't have a hypocrite on the panel. That's right. When you don't have a hypocrite, Muslims are standing there waiting on Israelites to come. Mm -hmm. Take them radios and just throw them in the street and say, what? Say something. That's a Muslim. Mm -hmm. You know that the messenger said. Right. The FOI fund is for brothers if you get uh, go to jail for fighting for the cause. Mm -hmm. We got money to bail you out. That was when you don't have a hypocrite on the panel. Yes, 
You ain't got a hypocrite brothers that go down there with them Israelites for fun. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, brother, it's Israelites. Now, let's go check them out. Go stand there and just listen to them picking up speakers, throwing them in the street. Call the captain. Yeah, I, we was fighting Israelites. That's how it would be. I'm telling you. If you got a brotherhood and a sisterhood, ain't no Muslim like, oh, they shouldn't have did that. Let's go on even further. Because this same article or this same incident was written in the Detroit Free Press. Now, this article or this incident is just the one that I chose. It's many that you can find. This was just the one I chose. God, I forgot to write the date. But this one in 1964 in the De Detroit Free. This is my favorite. The title says, Negro Foes Beaten by Black Muslims at Harlem Rap. It says, Violence flared when a 21 year old man tried to enter the armory and was shoved and kicked into the streets by guards wearing armbands identifying them with the Black Muslim movement. Another Negro carrying a sign which read, Muhammad is a phony appeared near the armory, armory and received a pummeling from the guards. He took to, he took to his heels with the placard and that. Now, Farrakhan wrote about this brother running in the, in the Muhammad Speaks. Just for the side note. Just so you won't be saying, oh, but they black. No, when they made it, when they beat him up and he started running, Farrakhan wrote about that in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper. So we won't be with the old my black brother stuff. So it goes on to say, it says the man who was beaten while trying to enter the armory identified himself as David West. So you can West on. So you can go to newspapers.com, type his name in to see what come up. Then on the other side, it says four policemen tried to rush to West Stone's aid. But the men with the armbands linked their arms to form a human chain, held the police back. That's when you don't have a hypocrite on the path. The Muslims would surround them Israelites to where no police would come and help them. I'm telling you the facts. I ain't telling you about a dream or something I hope. That was Muslims with the message. This in one article I read, when the police came up to try to help him, the brother told him, this ain't got nothing to do with you. So let's go on even further. It says four policemen tried to rush to West Stone's aid, but the men with the armbands linking their arms to form a human chain held the police back. A large group of policemen finally got through to Weston and pulled him to safety. He was given first aid but did not seem to be seriously hurt. It says one news photographer taking pictures from the top of the concrete steps of the armory was warned by the armed band wearers that if he did not stop taking pictures, you won't get to the bottom of the steps. These was must. You standing at the top of the, stop taking them pictures. If you don't stop taking them pictures, we're going to snatch you up off of there and drag you down the street. Them was Muslims. What no, my black brother. If I'm lying, prove me wrong. Another one that you can go look at. I forget this person's name. I wish I had, because this one is actually on video. You had this black news reporter. He came to the temple and accepted or he acted like he was trying to be a Muslim or something he did to get more information for the news. So he came to save this day. Farrakhan up at the mic speaking and he saw him. So mind you, this the old school brothers that was in there with Farrakhan. It wasn't these old my black brother because he was black. Wasn't none of the old my black brother stuff. So when Farrakhan saw him, he was like, look, there go whatever his name is. And he started talking about what he was doing against the messenger. Then he told the people, he said, put the light on. 
I'm telling you, that what I was like, wow. All the brothers that was behind, it's like they stepped up, said, put the light on him right there. Excuse me. That's exactly what they were doing. Standing right, like put the light on him now so every FOI can see him. Put the light on. So when they put the light on and the camera showed his face, I never seen so much terror in one person's face in my life. Because they put the light on. And when they put the light on him, he still blasted. Like he did. did like It was just such a crime to write an article against the message. Yes. So in today's world, we not only got a hypocrite on the panel, we got a hypocrite in the top spot. So I just, because I wish we had more time. Because I just want everybody to know. I don't want people to think the teachings of the messenger is weak. The teach because the messenger said my job is only to deliver the message. That's right. That's all my job is to do. Because he said, if you fighting against me, you only fighting against your own salvation. Mm -hmm. So the messenger, just to wrap up what he said about hypocrites, he says he becomes your enemy, regardless if it's your husband, wife, son, or daughter. So remember how the Holy Quran teaches the, that the messenger must be hard against such people, and I am. I just hope the day will come that I can weed them out by the help of Allah, because you hypocrites are a great hindrance to your own salvation and the salvation of others. That's, so That's this hypocrite, Louis Eugene. He is a great hindrance. To his own salvation in us. Because the more he allows the black man to be misled, the more black people going to go to hell. And that's what he want. Because you can't tell me. When you go read with this hypocrite, you because a lot of times when you had them uh, temple meetings that was in the temple. Because the temple meetings in the temple, I like listening to them. Because they was a little bit more fiery than they was out at these public rallies. You should go listen to try to find some of them, them lectures when he was in the temple talking to Muslims. Talking about how they'll beat all the teeth out your head. Because everybody would be applauding, sisters too. So the messenger said, we would never be successful with hypocrites on the panel. We can't be friend hypocrites. We can't sympathize with hypocrites. We got to be hard against hypocrites like the messenger was. Well, brothers and sisters... We don't want to prolong the time. So I leave you as I came in the nation of Islam. Greeting words. Peace of Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Enjoying the show? Help keep us on the air. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. To make a donation. Brothers and sisters, we rise for prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praises due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, soul master's day of judgment in which we now live. The alone do we serve and the alone seek for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou hast spell thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say he Allah is one God. Allah is he of whom nothing is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He begat us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is there to be served, worshipped, or praised besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor be Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. Amin. The honor be Elijah Muhammad taught us not to do anything to anyone that we wouldn't have done it to ourselves and treat everybody right, even the devil. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum.